A couple of weeks back, I showed how to debug audio sources and having to mention the ability to add a quick context toolbar in your inspector's header. Say if I wanted to debug an audio source quickly or maybe kill that character or create a debug camera under a cinema machine camera. Now, I shouldn't need to tell you why quick context buttons are useful, so I'm not going to. Into the code, and we start with how this works at a basic level. We're going to create a static class. We'll call it Inspector Header Toolbar Drawer, and we're going to add the attribute initialize and load above it so that the static constructor gets called as Unity gets loaded. Now, in this constructor, we're going to add a single line, editor dot finished default header GUI. And this is going to launch our own method called on finished header GUI. Now, in here, we'll draw a simple label that just says something basic. Stepping into Unity, and we see that if we select any object in this wonderful scene from Nature Manufacture or this great creature from Protofactor, both currently on sale in the Asset Store, affiliate links in the description, when we select them, we'll see in the header section of the inspector that we have that label with something basic. Back in the code, and we're going to add a new attribute. Let's call it Inspector Header Toolbar Button Attribute. And we're going to specify its usage will be limited to methods with the attribute usage. You don't need to specify it, but do it anyway. It'll help you avoid errors later on in life. Now, this new attribute that we've created will be above all the methods that we want to include in our toolbar. And to retrieve them in our static constructor, we will use the type cache class which I've done a whole video on before earlier on in the year. I'll leave a link in the description. But basically, for anyone not seeing it yet, if you're using reflection to find attributes or methods in your project, then type crash is going to blow your mind. Again, check out the video later. So we have all our methods in our code with that attribute, but we want to store them to call them later. Let's create a static action called on draw toolbar, which will use the editor parameter. Now, in our static constructor, we create delegates that we can be multicast using this static action. Note that we only want static methods here. Now, down in our onfinished header GUI method, we can call this action with the editor parameter from this method. Let's create a test case for that. We create a static method, let's call it onHeader button, and pass it an editor. In here, we will show a button with an audio icon that we'll steal from Unity's icons, and we'll set the style to toolbar button. By the way, if you want to know how to see all the styles Unity has as default in a nice little cheat sheet, then let me know in the comments and I'll pop up a video to show how to do that. Now, this button will log something special. Now, obviously, this button looks wrong. It's as fat as that first goldfish that you overfed until it started swimming upside down in its fish tank. It looks bad. So let's wrap that action in some prettiness by drawing a rect and keeping buttons in a right horizontal line. Now let's add another button to emphasize the layout and we'll pop back into Unity. Now we have a nice looking toolbar with two buttons in it. Let's make a concrete example as I know you're all gonna want that. So we're gonna use the audio case from the previous video. But before we do that, this video is not sponsored by them this time, but Unity is having a sale right now. And I bring it up because there's a tool that rarely goes on sale that happens to be featured. And that's the Scene View Bookmarks tool. And it's made by yours truly. If you have large scenes that you need to navigate, this tool will save you a ton of time. And you'll also be supporting this channel if you get it. So it's kind of a win-win, especially if you take the time to, you know, leave a nice review. Anyway, self-promotion aside, let's get back to it. We create a static method for our button as before, but now we check that we are first on a game object, and that game object happens to contain an audio source, and that audio source happens to contain a clip, because if it doesn't, why do we want to show this button? Now, if it does, we'll draw the button and we'll allow the user to play the audio that it happens to contain. If we step back into the editor, we see our new button and we can play that grunting sound that might be associated with our new monster friend here just before he's gonna say hello to you. Now, I'm a big believer in making things easy for users. So the last thing we'll do is we'll pop back into the code and we'll make this button have a tooltip. So there are lots of examples of using this sort of toolbar context. Basically, anywhere you would create a custom editor button, you could create one of these toolbar context buttons, as long as they're prominent enough. For instance, creating a debug camera or triggering those trigger zones during gameplay so your player doesn't have to walk all the way to it. Or maybe playing a cutscene, which could be useful if you don't want to play all the way through that level just to get to that cutscene point. Let me know in the comments what buttons you're going to add, as the community would also benefit from that knowledge. And that's it. There you have it. More saved development time, fulfilling my internal goal of one day creating the ultimate 
make game button.